Newness is the anthem. Put your hands up that you shoot with. Count your but we do on June team. Oh, hell no. Where are you going? Look for the fuse box. What kind of house is this? No, no, thank you. The blackening? Whoa. Jim Crow Monopoly. <laughs> Shit probably runs on racism. Pick a card and save Morgan. What do you mean, save Morgan? <laughs> Refuse to play, and she dies. <laughs> I think we have to play the game. What's going on, everybody? What's up? It's your girl, Sheree Nicole, here with another episode of Just a Thought with Sheree Nicole. I'm telling you right now, I cheated. I already seen it. It's a comedy horror film. It's called The Blackening. Now, first of all, they've done a great job with the promos because I've been seeing promos when I go to the movies for the, for the last several months. But it hits theaters, yeah, today, June 16th, a.k.a. Juneteenth weekend, starring some amazing actors and actresses and writers, actually, as well, representing well for themselves and for the culture, Antoinette Robertson, Dwayne Perkins, Melvin Gregg, and X Mayo. And uh, I got him in studio today. Ooh, How about that? Up? I'm Hello. very, very excited. Yes, what's sir. going on, you all? Thank you already for giving me your great energy. Yes. And I hope yes. to give it back to you. How you guys <laughs> feeling? And congratulations. What's popping? What's going on? You know, we are living life happily. Living the dream. Yes. yes. <laughs> it's a win. I love yeah, it. I love yeah. it. So I, I saw the movie, as I mentioned, early. And I'm glad I saw it early because as I was sitting there, I was like, mm, if I was in the movies, I'd probably be acting crazy, like laughing too hard. And That's what we want. There's it's no, se it's no yeah. such thing. You, you're supposed to do, do the most. It's like an interactive experience. You ever seen one of those theaters where like the, the seat shake and they sprinkle water? Oh, on yeah. 4DX. Mm -hmm. Love yeah, it. It's yeah. Like a, it's like a live version. It's like 4DX, but it's somebody next to you like Kiki. And <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's all of that. It's an interactive communal experience. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And I was talking a little bit earlier, just slightly earlier with Antoinette about the satire in this movie. And sometimes satire, like the storyline gets lost. It's, mm -hmm. Everything's kind of convoluted and you forget there's a story going on. You guys did just a great job mm -hmm. of staying true to the storyline while also making me laugh all the way through. Can you talk about just the importance of making sure that the storyline was intact, but we still got to do a lot of laughing? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I think that that was very intentional to be able to give these people like an authentic experience. Like At the end of the day, this movie is about friendship and yeah. what community like what are the privileges of community what happens when we all actually stick together uh like and i think that is a theme that is very true to black people yeah. like as a culture our survival has been predicated on community on resilience and kind of forcing that into the narrative was very important and then i think the juxtaposition of having the horror exist with these people like talking about friendship, talking about like their actual lives yeah. is what makes the horror comedy works. Um, and you'll see when you see it, there are moments where like there's very high stakes horror. And mm -hmm. yet these people are talking about like, well, we got to figure out this friendship right now. <laughs> 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 and those things and giving space to those things at the same time yeah. is that line of the horror comedy. Uh, so mm -hmm. I think that not losing the plot. Uh, was essential to the tone, to uh, creating a, a cinematic experience that made sense. But when yeah. you left, you 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 leave knowing and thinking about more than what you ever thought that you could. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Just put your story first. Absolutely. I want to, and anybody can take this. As you were talking to Wayne, I was thinking about, we just do a great job as black folk of even, no matter how serious or scary something is, we find a way to laugh through things. Yeah. We have to, because yeah. the alternative is losing it. Yeah, mm -hmm. for sure. Uh -huh. Seriously. I feel like so much of, so much in our DNA, like that's embedded in our DNA is like survival tactics. Yeah. Like we mm -hmm. have to find a way to survive. We have to find a way to cope, have to find a way to deal with trauma in a way. Um, I'm happy we're all going to therapy now, um, or at least we're moving we are. closer to going Who's to in therapy, therapy, right? Um, it's my, you're not, you're not, it's, you know I don't know. I'm just kidding. No, I have. A <laughs> no, Rose invoices me every week. <laughs> I even found a horse therapy where mm -hmm. you can do uh, a you thing in nonverbal. Yeah. No, it's, what? With, no, Melvin. 
Oh, it is equestrian horse? therapy where oh. you it's a lesson in nonverbal communication where you have to complete a course with the horse mm-hmm. and you know horses can't talk or, or well they shouldn't mm-hmm. um, but um, you have to complete this whole like thing with them and do a lesson in nonverbal communication mm-hmm. I don't know that horses are the smartest animal mm-hmm. they literally can smell and tell like when a human or another animal is pregnant mm-hmm. like wow. immediately yeah. they're so in tune so yeah no shout out to therapy mm-hmm. but it, it feels like as black people like entertainment has always kind of been that way Mm -hmm. that we've coped um if that makes sense like either it's music or it's it's a theatrical experience or it's laughter yeah yeah yeah. levity is like the cure to trauma like i remember Mm -hmm. one of my best friends passed away not too long ago and at his funeral the material was a one i was i was eating because like that's just like kind of like that joy of being like oh i need something to balance this Mm -hmm. um and i think that's why horror comedy works so well because those Emotions are very close, yeah. mm-hmm. um, and yeah, it it works very well. And you'll see when you see it in movie theaters on June sixteenth <laughs> uh-huh. at eight p.m. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> eight p.m. CST. <laughs> I love how this film, and and I hate to bring it up because I'm not a proponent of violence, but it is a it is a, a it timely is thing. <laughs> we, we look at what no. what happened with Amber Rose and Jocelyn Hernandez, and I, and I'm thinking about this movie because it really does cause us to dig a little bit deeper and really think about what are the definitions around blackness? Are we mismanaging our expectations? Are we reaching too far here? Are we not reaching enough? I love how this movie kind of makes you pause a little bit and really think about that. It's such a nuanced conversation because Mm -hmm. as black as it stands, it represents all of these people of African descent um, in a way. And we all have different experiences. We all come up different. We all have exposed to different things but it doesn't it doesn't take away from our blackness you can't quantify blackness you know what yeah. i mean we could be from completely different walks of life but we're still black even though within our community we might argue who's the blackest but outside of our community looking in we're all black they're gonna treat us um the same and then i mean if you go to the core of what black is is a way just to kind of group all of these people who had completely different you know different tribes from different spaces just like you guys are black like, yeah. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So it's just, it's so much to it, so much to impact, um, so much we're still learning about each other. But we had these conversations in this movie, and I feel like everybody feels seen in a way, you know, watching mm-hmm. it. They'll see a conversation that they probably had before, or they'll relate to one of the characters um, in a way that you don't see yeah. in any other movie, especially a horror movie, because there's only one of us. Typically. So, you know, who we talking to about being black? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the screen. Yeah. 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 I, I do think there's something very powerful about showing and not telling. Like, the ability to just show blackness in a range forces people to expand how they think about blackness. Mm-hmm. It's like, it's not our job to tell you right. how to think about it. It's your job to exist and absorb different experiences so that you can expand the way that you think Mm -hmm. and that is what i think this movie does very well it's presenting Mm -hmm. so many different kinds that if you try to quantify blackness i hope you feel dumb Mm -hmm. (laughs) because how like we're literally showing you you can't like there's just too many examples of what this could look like um Mm -hmm. and it is what you make it you are black so therefore you black. <laughs> it's like a lot of a lot of a lot of the blackness that we see on display is usually through the lens of whiteness. Yeah. And so what's nice about having creators that are black mm-hmm. and like yeah. producers that are black and actors that are black is that there there is no need to code switch. We are exactly yeah. who we are, unapologetically black. You see us in our like again different hues of blackness different black women who are still black regardless mm-hmm. of whether it's one drop of black or it does not matter we have a shared commonality yeah. and shared experiences and and we should all respect each other so hopefully when people come to the theater they get to see all of these hues of blackness um just us being ourselves and not caricatures caricatures of ourselves yeah um because that's how we're usually written you know what's funny when you talk about just having you know Black producers, black writers. And I'm not trying to give it away, guys, and I'm not. Mm-hmm. But O'Reilly's Auto Parts. Honey, <laughs> genius. It sent me to the moon. And, and that's the why you need to see two it. Lines <laughs> sent me. And, I, and again, these are things that we that I laugh about with my friends and family, thinking that it's just but like this is just something that an inside uh-huh. joke or something between us. You guys took the inside jokes and you put them right in front of the screen. Yep. Mm-hmm. And I think like that is something that I'm very grateful for, for having a team of black people that when writing it, there wasn't this idea of like, oh, I'm writing this for... Like, I don't have to translate this. Yeah. Uh, I'm 
purposely seeing blackness as universal because it is all the media that I've absorbed that was not made for me. I still enjoyed it and I absorb it and it made me learn more about people that were not like me. So being able to write something for me, being like, this is funny to me. I sing this song with my friends. How, is this going to resonate? I don't know. That's not like, that's not what I, yeah. I'm not writing this for that purpose. I'm writing this because this is an authentic and specific experience for me as a black person. So putting it in this movie and then seeing how people respond to it yeah. like blows course. my mind mm. every time. The entire because I didn't know that like, like it would hit the way that it hits. Because I'm like, oh y'all hard. do this too? <laughs> yeah, yeah, <exactly. laughs> yeah, that's how I felt. That's how I felt watching it. And that proves that black people are a monolith. <laughs> <laughs> we are all the same. No, seriously. And that's the movie. I think we are different, but we are also the same. Like, because there's and so the beauty in the script when she get her earring and she says, uh-huh. "Wow, it's different, but it's the same but different." Yeah. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. Come on and dig deep with the Easter uh-huh. eggs. Easter eggs. Easter eggs. <laughs> I've seen it four times and I just got it. Uh-huh, uh-huh, Look, uh-huh. That you means guys, you should go to the theater and see it four times. And that's why you got to <laughs> see it with a group, sis, because yeah, that, yeah, yes, that, every, that, that, agree, that agree. community choir of O'Reilly Ooh. Auto Parts and the way people were screaming. We saw it yesterday. My guy said, sister was sitting next to Melvin. She was like, King, why did you do that? Yeah, like, <laughs> <don't fall in laughs> there. And so we can't help to do it. And there's so many claps and cheers like when we get certain victories throughout yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. And it's, it's so, so oh freaking good you have to see it on june 16th with a group please come out this movie was made by us but it's for who everybody Everybody. and if you don't have a group you don't have friends we'll be your friends on the screen (laughs) and i'm sure there'll be other people in the theater that you can relate to because we all sing the same songs because we are what i want to i want to i want to touch on just a bit because there's a lot of laughter and all of that but there's also, we talked about friendship, Dwayne. You mentioned mm-hmm. that that's also. But we talk about, you guys talk about racial identity, bullying, self medicating's in there. There's fears around racism and police and all these different things. Mm-hmm. How do you guys hope that just like these glimpses and just kind of just tossing these things in the air, not to the, not to the wall so they stick because they stuck, but just kind of integrating them into the storyline is gonna, helps the overall while also not taking away from the fact that this is just a funny movie. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I think that that those are the parts that um, layer on the authenticity of being like, oh, because uh, something that you that I think was absent f- and that created the tropes was that when you have black people that are tokenized, they don't have the space to compare or contrast what that looks like. Yeah. So the ability to put all of these different points of views um speaks to like the actual lived experience of these black people and yeah. why them being put in a horror movie is different because they they've already lived a life where survival is at the forefront they have already had a certain lived experience that like teaches them like oh I'm not gonna do that because like it doesn't serve me yeah uh, and we were not ever trying to like create a commentary that's like oh we're trying to teach you something we, we're trying to say something because like no we're just showing you how these people live Mm -hmm. um and that is the revolutionary part because like often we are not allowed the space to just be Mm -hmm. uh and and that's why like it it feels like there's so many things because there's a lot of different people yeah and those experiences are different as a gay black man my experience is not the same as a black woman as a straight black man so having all of these pieces pop out it just shows you like oh even within blackness, there's so much difference that we experience based on like our specific identities. Yeah. So I think that was necessary to try to Im- imbue as much of that as possible uh, without being too heavy handed. Because like I'm a writer. I do comedy. I'm not a teacher. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So like take what you take. But mainly what I'm trying to give you is entertainment and whatever yeah. you get more than that. Congrats. Congrats. No, Dwayne's not a teacher, but he do be reading. He be reading. reading. <laughs> Read you down, it's baby. It's true. It's true. There was like, there's so much thought that goes into this. Yeah. Um, and to kind of feed you while giving you a lot of sugar, like we're hiding the medicine within the mm-hmm. fun. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, hopefully, hopefully, we could just spark conversation within your group chats if you take yeah. your friends to the movie, mm-hmm. and if not on Twitter, you know, just a conversation piece and kind of just unpack the film. While appreciating it, you know, as well, it's something that you leave from you leave from the theater, and you either learn something or it's something you want to talk about. Yeah. You know, yeah. and it's it's so much to discover. Like I said, I've seen it 
four times and mm. I'm just I'm still discovering stuff like even within this mm -hmm. conversation I'm like wait that was an easter egg here for that and a mm -hmm. simile for this and a metaphor mm. metaphor for that it's just it's brilliantly written in a yeah. way where you don't realize you're getting all of that but you're being fed yeah, mm -hmm. and we also have to shout out not only uh, the writers Tracy and Dwayne, but to the editors because I mm -hmm. always say the writers and the editors are the most important people to me within a production because it's nothing until it's cut and it's nothing yeah. until it's written, right? And Tim Story, the director. Tim Story, uh, yeah, I was about to shout him out as well because he's there during the entire editing process. But a good editor is a director within their own right, right? Mm -hmm. So I think you're able to with the sound that comes into play, right? Because everything within horror that music moves you that dun 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 it's like yeah. that gets your heart pumping and that's the most important part so we have to shout out all of our crew and we stand with them and we support them so much and we can't thank them enough for helping to make this a brilliant ass film that you have to see on June 16th, <laughs> June 16th. at 8pm <laughs> I like it Shereen you like to play you gonna get me cussed oh, yeah. out look, by the way speaking of like to play how did, I, and I know you all are so talented you've been doing this for years and all of those good things how are you all? How did you make it through these scenes without cracking up? Like, how many takes are we talking? Because wow. I'm watching this, like, how are they just doing this and moving on to the next thing? <laughs> I, it is I, the I, most difficult task I have ever experienced <laughs> in my life. I have learned to bite the inside of my cheeks to keep myself from breaking in a moment and ruining a take because these people, you you it's already outrageous. see the energy in the room, but we, the rest of us, because there's there's a whole other half of us mm -hmm. that when they start and they start to cut up. In the middle of a scene, it is the wildest thing you've ever seen because everyone just like has different ideas that they're they're inspired by. Of course, like the brilliant writing and then them understanding who their characters are. But then we just vibe off of each other energy wise. Mm -hmm. And it's just it's unreal. And I, I think too, just a, a testament to, <laughs> to the acting and the tone of the comedy and the horror. Like a lot of the comedy come from the honest moments. It's nobody trying to make jokes. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Everybody's honest in their moments. Um, and that's where the comedy comes from because we can relate to it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And everybody just being so tapped into their character. You know what I mean? Like, you know your character in the world of your character, so you're kind of in that. You know, I might not necessarily laugh at the shit she's saying because the stakes are so high, but it's funny to you on the outside. Mm -hmm. See a man good. walking down the street mm -hmm. and fall, yeah, it's yeah. a drama to him. But to us looking from up here, it's like, oh, that's funny. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like, that's we're so good. Melvin, Melvin, like, wow. that yeah. is yeah. diving. Yeah. 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 It's giving yeah. student of the crap. Oh, no. oh, he's an actor. Okay. <laughs> Come on, Melvin. Um, but yeah, yeah, we all uh, Big played it so honest and, and we so tapped into the character. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> and we be in those moments, you know. This is That's what we it. used to they, do. They throwing me off. He him, so, he, he, they would be so in the scene and me and Dwayne would be like, I'm going to show you my belly button. <laughs> <laughs> But that's what our characters would do. So yeah. it just, it really King just is fit. like, nigga, what are you? She's stripping naked, everybody laughing. I'm just like, are you done yet? I know. <laughs> so, so because Ex Mayo has been doing this this entire interview, I'm just gonna let her do it again. Your best sales pitch for those who may be on the fence about seeing this. <gasps> So this we're, we're talking the to the ones on the fence, not the ones that are going to be down to the theater because they already know what time it is. We're talking okay. about the ones who are like, mm, I don't know. And I just... It's the biggest best sales pitch to those folks. Okay, so if you're on the fence, um, if you're hopping it, or if you're waiting to give someone a boost um, on the fence about seeing the blackening, I would highly, highly encourage you to step outside your comfort zone if you don't, um, if you're not into horror, um, but you're you love comedy, or maybe you're like I just like old school classic horrors. We are bridging the gap between horror and comedy and giving you a new ass genre that you've never seen. We have seven hitters that are in this movie. There are no one is lacking. There's no no shortcomings on anybody at any point. We all have a moment to shine. You never get to see that. All of us could single-handedly hold down a film on our own. And we have never, yes. ever been able to do that as black people. Ever. So you need to come to see this because you need to be a part of history. Wouldn't you love to be a part of that? So come out and see the I, Black Girl June 16th at 8 p.m. CST. And if you don't come, PST. you don't like black people. <laughs> Joe Biden. <laughs> oh, God. Now I'm talking to you, Kamala girl. Hands of the dead. Hands of the dead. Because I know she listens to Cherie. She listens she listen to you. Hands of the dead. I hope she does too. Anything else for her while we at it? Um, Kamala, the dead. I think the dead. The dead. My set is it. And Kamala, you, she need to buy the theater. 100%. Kamala needs to get us a theater. And support Black Stories. And this yes. movie, again, was made by us, but it is for who? 
everybody. everybody. Yeah. You all heard it. I don't have anything else to say. The Blackening, make sure you check it out. It has been an honor, a pleasure. I wish you guys the absolute best. And thank you so much thank you. for this thank film. You. Thank, thank you, you. Miss Thank you for having us. Just a thought, just a thought. It's my opinion. It's just a thought, just a thought. Get out your feelings.